Ooh. Oh, uh, what a start. Stranded on a desert island. I've never seen something like this before. Well, uh, at least I have a turtle friend. Hello. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome back once again to Minecraft. But from the fact that I'm playing it, I'm sure you can tell this isn't regular Minecraft. No, this may be the worst possible place to demonstrate it, but I am playing with the much requested Cave Dweller mod. Now, what exactly does the Cave Dweller mod do? Well, to be honest, I have no idea besides, well, the obvious. I'm assuming it adds some kind of entity which stalks the caves under the game, but I'm only going off of the title. I've deliberately avoided any information on it so that it would come as a surprise. The point I'm getting at, though, is that while Herobrine was part of an already established legend, I truly have no context for what to expect from this, which makes it that much more terrifying just to know that something is out there. But then again, that's kind of the whole appeal of Herobrine, too, isn't it? I've always felt like stories like this were meant to sort of fill in the gaps where players already felt something must occupy. I mean, how many of us have been terrified by the idea of something being down in those caves, slowly coming towards us when we hear those cave noises? Even if this may present completely differently from how From the Fog does... I still think it's coming from very much the same place. Speaking of coming from the same place, I actually like to think, given our start here, that maybe I'm actually another survivor of the same wreck that stranded our character in From the Fog. Look, we've even got a different appearance and everything, <laughs> based on some fan art from that series. Thanks again to uh, Greg Basalt for making this skin, uh, based on fan art by Kami Scribbles. Uh, but we've got yet another hard swim ahead of us, and... Oh boy, we are fast-burning daylight. Okay, swim for our lives! Even if there's nothing else on that island out there, there's at least some trees so we can build ourselves a boat. Man, there were tons of trees on Gilligan's Island. The professor had no excuse. Ooh. Hang on, what was that? <laughs> we can actually see better above water than under. Ah, huh, an old nether portal and what looks to be some kind of shipwreck. Uh, maybe we can get some additional supplies from there. In the meantime, I think we're doing a hobbit hole tonight. Now, let's jump down here and try to grab ourselves some cobblestone so we can get some actually useful tools. Oh man, after playing From the Fog for so long, I'm so not used to being able to have anything I need on demand. Oh great, nope, nope, mobs definitely can spawn here, it is not too small for that. Oh, a ton of mobs can spawn here, this is the worst ever. And maybe I just make myself a boat right now. Alright, forget this. Nope, 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 we're safer at sea than we are right here. So long, suckers. <laughs> uh, I don't know where you guys came from. Maybe you just sprang up out of the ground. Oh, we're going diving. Oh, I already see a chest. Excellent. Uh, what's down there? Uh, a whole ton of gold tools. Oh, it is so dark, it is so dark. But we found treasure. Uh, there's some potatoes, but we want to save those for farming, and some coal. If we come down through here, ah, uh, maybe we can come through here. Aha, and grab that! <gasps> Are you absolutely kidding me right now? I don't think I've ever found diamonds before iron before. That is nuts. Two diamonds right off the bat. I'm literally don't even have a house yet. Don't even have a hobbit hole yet. Given all the aquatic enemies that could be about, I almost don't even feel safe leaving here, but it's very important that we find some land. I just got startled going over the magma. So let's just pick a direction and go. 
I actually really like to move in a straight line in a situation like this because I want it to be easy to navigate back to my house. Not my house, I mean my starting point. I mean, the starting point of any world is always such a nostalgic place, isn't it? A place you want to come back to and reflect on what you've been through in your game. Land ho! Ooh, ooh. Truly, this is a strange and cursed land. <laughs> is this world glitching out already? I hope not. But let's do the coward move and start digging in. We need to set up our accommodations for the night. We'll also need ourselves a sword for this early game so that we can make it so that there's less folks about like you. Oh, it's been so long since I've had to fight you guys with a sword. I really need to eat something now. Okay, we're really at that point. We're really at that point where we're kind of doing some manual fishing. Yep. But desperate times call for desperate measures in this early game. As we all know, a house isn't a home until you slap a door on it. So there we are to mark ourselves for, well, ourselves and any potential travelers. And I think we are now good to make ourselves a bed and sleep through our first night. Now that we're a little bit more food stable, food stable in this case meaning I have full health and two fish in my inventory, I think it's time we start looking for some caves. Not only because we want to see what this mod is all about, but because if I want to progress at all, I'm going to need some iron. And if caves are something we want to find, under such mountains are definitely one place to do that. Oh, wow, there are some really tall ones off in the distance. Oh, imagine the treehouse city you could build on top of that thing. Oh, why do I always get the coolest world generation? All right, we're definitely heading over there. Not even for what's above, but for what's almost certainly beneath. Hello, I don't have my spyglass, but what is that over there? Oh, my God! Uh, is that a shipwreck? Oh no, the bones of the sailors are being picked clean by that brigade of turtles. Oh, this is a dangerous isle indeed. Uh, but I think we're going to have to do some excavation to maybe see if, uh, I, I don't know, maybe the ship had like a black box or something. Uh, but we'll have to be very careful not to anger the cannibal natives. I don't know why I bothered opening those. <laughs> All right, let's start digging. Archaeology is the name of our game right now, and we've already found something. And a whole lot of poisoned potatoes. And maybe the turtles were just scavengers. Maybe they just had a really bad cook who fed them some bad food. You know, I had thought that turtle on the spawn island was my friend, but... And maybe it was just waiting for me to stop moving. Uh, this is an underwater thing. No, this is not what we're looking for. We need something with access, you know? And that might be just the place. Anything we should be seeing? Oh, wait, I have Optifine installed. Will it? Yes. Okay, this does work. Excellent. Excellent, 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 but there are mobs spawning here. This has access to deeper levels, but there are mobs spawning now. Uh, can you please give us your bone meal? Thank you. And you just chill right there. Actually, yes, do explode. Do explode. You're not the most dangerous things down here, are you? And as we return to the welcoming glow of our cozy hobbit hole, I think we can finally rest easy. This has been, like, such... I always forget how difficult it is in the early game, the reverse difficulty curve that this thing has. Where in the early game, you're like, oh man, I gotta hide in the ground so the zombie doesn't find me. And later on, you're like, yeah, I'll fight a god dragon, I'm kind of bored. 
Whoa. It looks like there's an even crazier mountain in the distance. Uh, how deep does this river go? How close can it get us? Oh, uh, look, as it loads in, we can even see, like, a waterfall coming from above. And you know what? Water in this game is also an elevator, but... That is the mouth of one very, very large cave. And the water takes us straight in. Let's get out our handy dandy torches, although... This cave glows at night, doesn't it? Because there's a lava flow on this side. Now, the hope is that we can find some place where this goes deeper into the mountain. No! No, 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 no! Oh, the Bone Brigade is active today. I'm uh, trying to burn through all my food so soon. But yeah, it's like none of these entrances I'm finding actually go deep. Uh, whereas in the previous world, I just couldn't stop tripping over crevices to the center of the earth. And it's like the world itself knows what I've unleashed on it and doesn't want anyone to find it. This is around side that great mountain. And maybe there's more caves to be found here. I mean, probably not smart being out so late. But this, yes. Uh, it's underwater. Ooh. Uh, even after all these huge, exaggerated features of nature, we may have actually found our ticket in a small, hidden away crevice. Now, that is where these things tend to hide, though, isn't it? Charlie, don't go in the crevice. I could not resist that joke. It goes deeper here, but everything seems to lead to water. Now, this is a very wet world, a water world, if you will. But I can't tell if it actually leads somewhere I need to go. Now, underwater cave diving, not the safest thing for me to be doing right now. What about this way? Eh. Yet another one of these such structures. Yeah. I, I think this probably does go deeper, but not without some kind of breathing apparatus, doesn't? Maybe there's something we can... Oh. Tell you what, something that might be a possibility. <laughs> Maybe I can go full idiot on this. And in the name of rushing just sort of create points for myself to breathe. I mean, physics never stopped me from doing anything stupid in Minecraft before. Alright, thinking what we do is if we crouch right here, we'll mine at normal speed. So we can do stuff like that, and here's our breathy hole. And we'll just keep doing that. As long as we have something to stand on, we'll be okay. So, if we can go... Uh... Rush in, rush in, rush in. And I think we have our ticket. Oh, this is so deep and dangerous. What was that? I've never heard that cave noise before. Hang on, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Oh, I was so distracted, and I'm going to start losing health. I was so distracted, and I'm going to start losing health. That sort of sounded like a vocalization, almost. I mean, I, it, it could have just been regular cave noise. It caught me so off guard, but that was really weird, especially to hear it, like, diffuse through the water like that. Oh, wait, I'm drowning here? Wait, how, 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 why, why am I drowning here? Why am I drowning here? Why am I drowning here? I was in an air pocket. I was in an air pocket. All right, I managed to get my stuff back. You really cannot breathe for a long time when you don't have any upgrades. It's like I go two feet and then I look down and it's already gone. I really need to put these things just like everywhere. 
Also, apparently being inside the- oh no, yeah. Apparently being inside a thing that doesn't draw water doesn't actually matter. You know what? It's gonna be very time-consuming, but maybe a better thing to do would be to actually just eliminate these source blocks. Now look, I know it's not gonna work as far as, like, you know, actually removing the water flow, but if we work slowly, maybe we can actually make this into an engineering project. Oh, to have some sponges right now. Now this will be more or less a permanent air pocket, right? Or at least one that's considerably easier to work with. Then again, is all this a waste of time? Because it seems to me that a place like this, like, it's just going to lead to more underwater caves. It could always come out in something that isn't. But I have always ever gone in reverse. Going from, well, not submerged caves to ones that were. And occasionally back out again, but it's still difficult. Ah. Uh. Creating a lip like that helps a lot. Those cave noises never cease to be spooky. Okay, right here should be perfect. There we go. And let's actually mark these with light because they might be pretty difficult to find on the way back. Oh, we must be pretty deep because I am seeing deep slate. It's kind of in the name, you know? Boop. And now that we're leveling out, it'll be much easier to just hop from place to place like this. Uh, and there are wonders in the deep, truly. And now it bears fruit. Oh, that is so cool to see this idea work. I mean, kind of. I died doing it, but you know what I mean? Lots of enemies here, though, but potentially lots of rewards? Oh, and we're in one of these, like, hanging basin things. These structures which overlook the whole caves. It's kind of weird to go down and come into something that's above something else. Kind of makes you wonder what your whole path through there must have looked like. Now, in From the Fog, I had actually stopped using torches to light caves uh, due to Herobrine's annoying tendency to turn them into redstone torches, but here, here, we had the opportunity to start making them our own. So we're going to need a whole bunch more. Let's just make another one of these things just so we have it. That was not a regular cave sound. No, no, no. I think I just heard something spooky afoot. <laughs> but the show must go on, right? This is why I'm here. We've got to investigate that noise. You know, when you first start playing a game like this, there's certainly an anxiety in the unknown. In coming to these places and not knowing what's down here with you. But I feel like it's a different thing, not just in how unfamiliar this is, but also in the clash between the familiar and unfamiliar. I know Minecraft. It's a game I've been playing for over a decade. And yet, there's something here. Some new element that has yet to reveal itself to me. And yet, there is also, you know, that familiar element because it sort of represents a fear that's always been present. Okay, die. Uh, there you are, getting hit with that thorns. But there is a lot here, and we do not have a lot of food. <laughs> was that like a... Was that like a elephant or something? We got cave elephants? Because that would actually be pretty rad, not gonna lie. Why does this water look different, actually? Have we found a mine already? Oh, this video is progressing rapidly. Ask anybody how long from the fog took. Yeah, we already have a mine. Which always begs the question. 
just what did cause it to be abandoned? Uh, I feel like we're hearing that more and more the deeper we go. Uh, Endermen. And a whole lot more structures all over the place. I feel like I'm um, kind of not doing the right thing right now. I came down here to start putting torches, marking territory, and denying spawns to enemies. So I feel like by exploring, by letting my curiosity get the better of me, I'm actually putting myself in unnecessary danger. Oh, but it's just so hard not to look. All right, well, look, utilize our primal survival instincts. We're always safer in these tightly wedged, compact spaces because nothing can see us from a distance and anything that can get in here, we can fight. Or at least that's the hope. And moving into these, uh, moving into these mine shafts actually provides us a nice natural or I suppose unnatural way of doing that. With any luck, we'll be able to find some chests in these mine shafts containing some food. I'm actually running quite low. I think all I have left is this cooked salmon. And if we do, maybe that'll extend our trip a little bit. If that is wise. But at least we do have plenty of iron, right? Oh, now, I did not set these torches up. And there's more of you. Great. Uh, that's going to make it difficult to navigate. Hmm. This is a fairly large chamber. Connects to another side, but it's almost like they excavated this and then never actually built anything within. Ooh. That's not good. <laughs> Okay, I guess it's up to us to finish this one. Oh, look, it's all suspended by chains. One arrow, one badly placed arrow right now. And we go falling below. Uh, speaking of arrows, we do have a couple and a bow, courtesy of some, uh, courtesy of some skeletons that have the courtesy to die. But that's all we've got, so we really want to start lighting our way now. Oh, look at all these bridges just suspended above the chambers. I've never seen it generate this way. This is so cool looking. But there's all kinds of creepy crawly still about that we've got to be wary of. And you know, very notably, we heard those strange sounds a lot when we first showed up. But I haven't heard any in the entire time I've been exploring these chambers. It's actually been quite a while, and, well, if anything, that just sets me more on edge. I mean, having that play when we first arrived, well, I can't help but be reminded of entering an abandoned building or something that some animal has been nesting in, and even long before you see it, it wants to make it very clear you're not welcome here. This is probably the deepest we've yet been. I haven't even been... Besides these torches, I have not been doing an adequate job of marking my way back. Oh, it goes so much deeper. Okay, this will be a landmark to pay attention to then. You know, it's always real creepy to look down one of these shafts and see a light from a torch you know you didn't place. And yet, like a moth, I can't help but be drawn to them. Hmm, now this one goes on for an unusually long time. And if we use the last of our food, maybe we can find some more here? Uh, no such luck, but we do get some beetroot seeds. And some more torches to keep us going, but I... I think it's time for us to head out. I think we pushed our luck enough. Okay. 
Now this central area with all the bridges, that kind of is going to act as our hub. It's the way we ground ourselves to the overall structure that we find ourselves in. We need to know where we are inside the greater beast. Having that mental map, or even those frames of reference, that's how you do it. I've always been really bad about getting lost in caves, and yeah, I know there's ways of doing it, but they're just so complex at this point that so few of those things really work for me. The only thing that's always been, like, consistently helpful for me is to make arrows on the ground out of contrasting materials. I have fought all I can fight, and I am completely and utterly worn out. Unless I want to eat some of that rotten flesh, which uh, I don't think is really an option for us at this moment. I haven't gone completely the descent yet. Oh, of course, you choose the room with the best acoustics to do that. That wasn't just your typical cave sound, that actually sounded like it came from a direction. I almost felt that, like, vibrate in the back of my skull, and then when I whipped around... Well, it was definitely coming from in front of me. That audio panned. Did I come through here to begin with? Oh, there's another one of these deep crevices. And I'm out of torches. I realize that now, or, well, I've got these that I got from the crate. Uh, what am I doing down here? I know I didn't come from here. Uh, now that I've heard that stuff, I'll be honest, I am leaving here with almost a feeling of having been, like, marked in a weird way. Okay, we don't have a lot of air left, but we can just make it. Unfortunately, in making my big air pocket, and subsequently flooding it, I've sort of negated a lot of the little air pockets that I was killing myself over on the way in. But subsequent journeys should be quite a bit easier. Hello, boat. Hello, boat I raced over here after I died the first time. Let's just mark this as the entrance to Horrors Unspeakable. And get home before it gets dark, although... Now that thing, whatever's down there... It lives in the dark. By creating that tunnel to the surface, have I potentially let it out? I'll always feel in a situation like this, even if I have no evidence to support it, that you know, maybe whatever's down there will come knocking on my door in the middle of the night. Then again, my playthrough of Darkwood might have touched my spirit a little bit. We're going to need more wool, and I think I'm going to knock down these trees to build ourselves a bit of temporary housing on site. Because it's definitely going to get a little bit draining having to come back here every single time. And especially with a cave of that magnitude, I know we're going to be exploring that for a while. Oh, great. Oh, you guys will just find me anywhere, won't you? All right. Yeah, boop. Yeah, boop. Yeah, boop. Come on, two more arrows. Yeah, boop. And yeah, boop. Unfortunately, I don't have quite the resources I had in the other series to just utterly murder you all in like two hits. Hey, guys, over, over here. Can you see me? Hey. Yeah! <laughs> Both of them just look at each other and then back at me. Alright, vehicular manslaughter it is. And by vehicular manslaughter, I mean drive-by rowboat sorting. Which might actually be a first in terms of crimes. But you guys make it so difficult. And you will apparently hit yourself. And apply me the bad omen trait, which uh, I guess doesn't matter. I've never seen one of you guys puff up before. Don't worry, this wasn't about you. I'll tell you what, maybe this can go right over here to serve as a warning to all who may dare to sort of disturb the peace in what passes for my front lawn. Oh, who am I kidding? I have a oceanside property. This place is worth millions. 
Oh man, wow, whoa, 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 the whole bone brigade's here. Okay, yeah, some of you guys hit each other, please. Okay, no, retreat, 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 too strong for me. Okay, Skeletrex is certainly amassing his hordes. Knew exactly where to find me. Oh, we're gonna have to go to the future. Crap, dang it, this sucks. Okay, so just as part of my uh, inoculation campaign, for those of you who are new viewers, uh, I need everyone in the world to, to know what that is from. So the link to the sketch that that is from will be in the description. There we go. Die and some bones. Uh, we're becoming very wealthy in the world of the Bone Brigade. You know their bones are their money? Hooray! I defeated the Bone Brigade, see? So this is something that's consistent and not just a one-time bug. For whatever reason, it just doesn't rain in front of the hill that would become my hidey hole. And just another strange thing in an ever-growing list of weird things that have happened to me in this game. But in the interest of moving on, I think I have enough food now to head over to that uh, crevice in the earth and start building my home away from home. And I think the best course of action would be to set up right on this hill overlooking the hole. So, since I do actually want to sleep here tonight, I'm gonna have to make this quick, turn this into a barn raising. Well, it was a very rushed process to be sure. But we have ourselves our dream vacation house, overlooking a pit to the depths themselves. I know I'm not great at building, but I feel like my skills have improved at least somewhat over the course of the previous series, and I think this will be a nice comfy spot to spend our time when we're not down in the deep dark being chased by horrors unknown. Now blessed with plenty of food, a nice suit of iron armor to protect us from what's down there, lots of tools, and if all else goes wrong, we do have a closer spawn point. Although, I have to say, if I was worried about that thing coming for me in my sleep in my other house, well, I guess we just hope it can't swim. Well, how appropriate is it that we enter this world by literally diving in? Oop. Oh, <laughs> when I hear stuff like that, it makes me think that maybe it can swim. Especially with how directional it seems to be compared to other cave noises. Like, does that actually mean that it's near? Ooh. I didn't even notice this crater. How do we get ourselves down there? I mean, I kind of do want to go deeper, uh, both to increase my chances of encountering something down here, and also because I could really use some more diamonds. But we want to bring light with us, of course, and now... Now we're in the deep. I hate that. God, every one of these sounds, I would love to know how they were made because, oh jeez, they cut right to the spine, don't they? Uh, but it goes ever still and gets ever more claustrophobic. Imagine coming down here with a flashlight or something and seeing the glint from a pair of eyes staring back out of that. Uh, I, I, I creeped myself out. Definitely hearing it very frequently now. You know it's weird that this chamber is almost creepier now that it's totally empty? I mean, sure, I felt like I was intruding when I came down here and was immediately met with a hail of arrows and explosions, but... Oh well, no, this just feels wrong. Let's 
Because, you know, this is a classic Minecraft cave scenario. Made a little creepier than classic by the deep slate being darker. But it's just those moments where you're looking up, mining something, and you can just feel that you have your back to the darkness. I think that's the feeling that this mod aims to sort of give a face to. Oh, found our first diamonds! Well, not really, but what would have been our first diamonds had the game not been incredibly generous for no reason. Uh, this actually links onto that system. Or at least I hope it's the same system. Now, what is that? Okay, my curiosity is absolutely peaked now. Let's get down there. Look at the way it's up on these supports. This might be one of the coolest things I've ever seen in Minecraft. And I've seen some pretty cool things in the last series. Yeah. This might all connect to the same system, but it's definitely not a part of it that I'd seen before. Oh, it's gonna be so hard for you to see, but look. All these suspended bridges leaving chains going straight up to the ceiling. That impossibly high ceiling. We desperately need to keep moving now. Uh, maybe we can... Oh, look, so many diamonds, so many diamonds, but this structure... Is that made of bone? When has there ever been structures made of bone in this game? I don't even... I knew the blocks existed! Not near my diamonds, you don't. Ooh, slimes. Uh, they seem to be dropping from above. Uh, these things are so hard for me to find often. Like, I, I so rarely see them. But yeah, getting rid of you is definitely going to be something we want. Get out of there, you. Now, let's finally, after all those distractions, have a look at what this is. That's literally it. It's just an enclosure of bone and diamonds at the bottom of this pit. Well, whose fault is that? I can't help but feel that this might have something to do with you. But I want it all because, well, you know, each one is worth nine bone meal. And I need food. Even more diamonds bring our total, I think, to nine. You know, I really have to wonder, maybe this place wasn't intentionally abandoned. Maybe what I'm mining right now is what became of the crew. Truly, there is all kinds of magic at play in these depths. But yeah, I'm actually really surprised I haven't seen this thing yet. Now, there are actually two different versions of the mod. One, which is mainly used for testing, where it apparently spawns a lot more often. So I'm gonna try that at some point, but honestly, I don't know if it's not working or if it really is just that patient. But either way, we found a wealth of resources down here today. Darkness will soon envelop the overworld as well as the underworld. And I have made myself some diamond tools to get down there for a final expedition. I'm gonna find this thing even if it kills me, and that's a very distinct possibility. Hey guys, sorry, you're not the focus of this video, goodbye. Now I've been at this for over four hours now, and I still haven't seen this thing. And for that reason, I'll probably have cut a lot of this. And so it may not necessarily be clear what the actual geography of this tunnel looks like. So let me trace our steps to that large dark cavern, so that you know what this looks like, and also so you know that beyond this, everything else is completely unexplored. So we want to come down here, drop down into the right, and this will lead us to that, like, even larger drop-off. Through here, and this is the large tunnel with the mine shafts running through it. And before, there were too many enemies to really see it from a distance, but this is just... 
absolutely wild. And the explorer in me really wants to map it out some more, put torches everywhere, but uh, unfortunately, in the interest of our bit of cryptid hunting, we're actually going to be going darker than I would like. And you know, since I'm so dedicated to finding this thing now, you know, kind of figured that would happen, I'm actually going to start removing torches that I find. Because I'm not sure if the game actually recognizes the light from the torch being carried by me. But what I really want right now is to immerse myself in the dark. God. It's almost ridiculous how many enemies are here. And something is definitely coming for me. You know, I actually asked on the Discord what it actually means when I hear these sounds. Because they sound so much more directional than the other cave sounds. And well, if from the fog is anything to go by, a disturbing thought that some people brought up to me is that maybe it actually is there when I hear it. Maybe I just can't see it staring back at me from the dark. Oh, it feels so wrong to be knocking lights out like this. But I just don't know what else to try at this point. <laughs> I mean, look at that image. Good time for a cave sound. Imagine seeing something come running out of the dark like that. So that's the thing. I have no idea how this thing is actually going to behave or if it'll actually hurt me or not. After a while, I knew that Herobrine wasn't able to actually physically damage me, but this... Oh my god, I think that's it! Feels like cheating to zoom, but it's right over there by the... Hang on, wait, wait, wait. Let's try and get to it. Let's try and get to it. Oh my god! Oh my god! Jesus! No, 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 no! I'm dead, 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 I'm gonna... I fell into lava and I lost all my diamonds. Oh, holy Christ, I'm not even mad. What was that thing? Hold that didn't behave like anything else I've ever seen in Minecraft. For chase me into lava, I'll show you chase Sue into lava. I'm going back down there, and I'm going for round two. This is no longer a scientific expedition. This is obsession now. Oh my god, that was after so long of nothing. And then it just... It was just like a couple of out-of-place pixels in the distance, and I, as soon as I took a closer look, I was like, is that a face? And it's like elongated, twisted head looking down at me from up above, and just as I was getting curious, it lets out this shriek and sprints off at- I can't even- oh my god. I can't even commentate right now. We're getting back down there and we're putting a freaking bullet in that thing's head. I mean, a sword. This is fantasy, so it's PG. Now, thankfully, we had enough materials in reserve to make ourselves new tools and armor. And definitely to make ourselves a bucket of water, which I should have been carrying. But it's going to take us a little bit to build up enough food and other survival gear for round two. Uh, you okay there, sheep? <laughs> oh, man, you are not dealing well with being sheared. Anyway, I just need to build up this food. What what a memorable first encounter. Four hours of playing in the last record session and nothing. And then like five minutes down in the tunnels and that happens. Oh my god, look. It actually says, tried to swim in lava to escape Cave Dweller. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, well, you know what? Now I'm realizing, when I first saw it, my first instinct was curiosity. I had been trying to find this beast for so long. But what I realize now is what I should have done was use that stillness to take a shot at it. My goal now isn't just to find it, it's to find out if I can kill it. It is a dark and stormy night. And now that I've encountered it, every time I look over towards that gaping hole in the mountain, 
I think I'll see that white glowing face staring back at me. Just got some potatoes in the oven, and once those are done, we're going straight back down there. We have most of what we need besides that. Uh, Endermen, don't do this to me. Huh. Seems the rain behaves strangely in all parts of this world. Must just be the continent I've washed up on. But, alright, pre-game gear check. We've got weapon, pick. We've got a bow, some arrows, courtesy of the Bone Brigade. Armor, torches, and food. Let's do it. You really want to let me know that you know I'm coming, huh? Oh my god! Oh my god, it can't spawn underwater! It can't spawn underwater! It can't spawn underwater! Oh my god! Okay, uh, wait for it to come up. Wait for it to surface. Will it s surface? Listen to those sounds. Is it... Is it drowning? Aha, I think you're drowning. And like, so am I right now, but you know what I mean. Did you just die? Oh, that is such poetic justice. After all that. After all that, the biggest challenge to me was also the biggest challenge to you. However, <laughs> I'm assuming you're not down for the count. I didn't actually see you die, so either you fled... ...or there's more of you down here. Oh god, what if... What if it never stopped chasing me after death? And it just got as close as it could? I mean, that was real weird to just find it down here. This time I got a slightly better look at it up close, and... My god, its face. I mean, I had seen its tall, dark, lanky form that allows it to blend in while still having its glowing face tall in the darkness. And I'm nervous about every sound now, but its face. There's just something about how it's so elongated and featureless. It almost looks like seeing a, a sperm whale or something come at you head on. Uh, but its eyes are pointed forward, its mouth so low. Uh, it's just... It, it's almost like an illustration from like a children's book or something. The kind of monsters a child might conjure up in their mind when they're looking into the dark from their bed, but... Here it is. Here it was, staring at me from the darkness, and then somehow even worse, back up at me through the depths in those confined underwater tunnels. But both times, I mean, it never even got to lay a hand on me, or at least I don't think so, both times, it was actually the environment that did me in, it was the fear of it that killed me. Maybe if we can conquer that fear, we can make it easier to conquer the creature itself? And then again, it was pretty mad about me destroying its bone throne, which, to be honest, I can relate. Well, now that we've seen it... Now that we've seen it, we know that it has a tell. We keep this place dark, and we just look around for that telltale glow. I mean, that thing, we saw it crawl over the ledge of that cave, and then just kind of watch us. Almost as if it was curious, but then... Once it saw that I wasn't afraid, it had to let me know that it wasn't either. Maybe it'll follow me in? <laughs> Maybe I want that? Ah, more diamonds, that's useful. And yes, okay, the good news is that watermelons have not gone extinct in all this. And a golden apple. Excuse me, you're being rude. I'm here for a different monster. It can bleed. We learned that. We learned that this thing can be killed, but... 
It may be a lot of help. I mean, it took it quite a while to drown. Far longer than it would take me, that's for sure. Pig ground chamber. Even more diamonds. Yeah, you're almost part way to repaying me for all that. Actually, this should be about half. But, you know, it would be an even bigger prize. It's just you making an appearance. More diamonds. I'm getting insanely lucky with these things in this run. Oh, man. Okay, I realized what I forgot. A shovel. Even more. And even more. Okay, we are officially good. Uh, with interest. <laughs> okay, just in that moment, realized how much a bat space looks sort of like the cave dweller. And that's the thing, like, you know, a mob that comes to try to kill you in the night is one thing. But we know we're invading... I it's territory! just screamed and ran off. Oh my god. Uh, even from a distance, like the muffled sound of that howl. Literally. When people say something is spine chilling, that's literally what that means. Oh, you led me to more diamonds. Thank you. Uh, maybe you felt bad. Maybe you want to be friends. Maybe I know better. See, the thing is, I don't know if that means I saw it, or, as the sound implies, it saw me from behind. Ah. Jump scaring me, baby zombies. Ah. I might be a little bit jumpy right now. Okay, it is just absolutely unacceptable to die right now. Because it would be real hard to find anything specific, and uh, I'm currently carrying 17 diamonds, as well as 6 more worth in the tools. Okay, so... Those last two runs were much more successful than the ones in the previous session. But now... Forget me being marked, it's been marked by me! Look, it drove us to our death once, we drove it to its death once, and some might call that a draw. And I'm happy to do so, but in that third encounter, it ran and hid. So I just want to see it up close one more time. That's all I want, just to see what it does. Reliably. Reliably, every single time I enter this way... It's like it knows. And I really don't like the sound of that coming from behind me. Where are you? I know you're about somewhere. Maybe it'll be better if I just stand still. Something I really have to ask of you guys, and please let me know in the comments. Had there been times when it was there and I just didn't notice it? Because in From the Fog, that happened plenty of times with Herobrine. And it, it never failed to make my stomach drop when someone pointed out a moment when I didn't even notice it. Especially in those real close encounters where it was right there. There's just something about knowing that something was there only after the fact that makes it that much creepier. Actually, now that I think about it, how many scary stories had that as some kind of a factor? So many stories like, yeah, I was at the grocery store or something and I bumped into this guy and yeah, he seemed pretty nice and then later I saw in the news he was on the run for murder or something. I, I think there's just something like especially scary about later learning that you were oblivious to some danger and got out of it only through sheer luck. What is that noise? Just trying to heal up after eliminating that nest. But I know you're in here somewhere also. 
It actually kind of sounded if you were taking damage, like maybe you got tangled up in all this. Or maybe other NPCs can attack you? I don't know. Oh, it is so deep and thick with this stuff. Another spawner. Oh. Oh man, I think that's okay. That's web hanging down. Didn't that didn't that look like its face in the dark for a second? Oh, this is getting crazy though. I am at almost seven hours of recording. And we've encountered it a grand total of three times that I know of. Three times. And that's been really annoying me. Until just a couple minutes ago, when I was thinking about it, and I realized, you know what this mod is? This is something like an old-time video game urban legend. I mean, it sort of reminds me of, yes, Herobrine, but also of riding around on motorcycles in the Liberty City Metro looking for the Ratman, or the Ghost of Lockout, or all kinds of other things. I mean, I was down here not even playing the game, just running around for hours and hours trying to find any hint. And then when I finally did, it was quite a memorable experience, almost framed like, well, like a boss fight. But then again, all those other times, well, they were more like those stories someone might tell on the internet. Those stories about, I totally saw something in the caves, dude, and it totally freaked me out, and then nobody believing them, and it being so brief that there's no way they could have gotten a video or a screenshot. It's definitely increasing in frequency, though. We've seen enough to know that the cave dweller is very real. Yeah, which is a statement that would probably pack more weight if I hadn't, you know, gone to the YouTube video and clicked the link and downloaded the Google Drive mod and put it in my mods folder, but, you know, let me dream for a second. I guess after that, it tasted blood and wanted more. Uh, but in trying to reach its hand in the cookie jar, the cookie jar being the world above, and we kind of caught each other in that space between worlds... Well, after that, it seems to have gone back to just being intent to watch. The one other time I saw it, it just kind of slinked away when we spotted it. Full disclosure, for the final run out of here, I've enabled the version of the mod uh, that causes it to spawn much more frequently. So maybe it'll have a chance to do just something else while we're making our way through. But once more, it simply runs. Runs until it's out of sight, and then we lose it completely. Yeah. I think, I think we're kind of each other's white whale at this point. Which is maybe how we should leave it. Uh, please let me know if there's other things you think I should do, or things I should try. But in the meantime, I just... Oh, I saw you, I saw you, I saw you. I definitely saw you over there, uh, but in the way distance. No, you're still there. Yeah, uh, I've actually caught you off guard. Oh my god. Okay, you are definitely, definitely spawning more now. Oh my god. <laughs> oh look, your arms are all splayed out as if to say, where are you going? Leaving so soon? Yeah, that's what I figured. A noise for when we see you, and a noise for when you go. Well, um... <laughs> it's kind of weird how much character it's showed, even if it is mostly my own imagination. Or at least I assume so. Now let's get out of here. 
Honestly, even though we got to see it more with this alternate mod, after playing for seven hours trying to get, like, not even half as much as what we saw in those last few minutes, I honestly think the lesser way is the way to go. See, what I love about having it appear so rarely by default is that I feel like that's what makes it perfectly capture what video game urban legends are based on and what makes them so appealing. It's this thing that you just go in having heard that it's there, and then if you're like me, you spend seven hours looking for the thing, not even sure if it's working correctly or if there really is anything at all and the whole thing's not just a gag. And then you just catch that fleeting glimpse, and that alone is enough to cause you to want to pursue further. You tell people they don't believe you. Next thing you know, a lot of people are looking, and all people are coming up with their stories and their claims for what they saw. I just love so much the idea of having this creature in the game that is horrifying, but truly elusive that we almost never see, and when we do, it's even rarer for something crazy to happen. Most of the time, we can't even be sure we've seen it. I don't think I'll be doing, like, a whole series on this. I don't think this was meant to be something that's focused on. I think it was meant to be something that you add to the game just for something to be out there. Just for a legend with truth to it, and I really appreciate it for that. However, if the versions are ever compatible, I could certainly see myself adding it to From the Fog, or even just adding it to my regular gameplay experience, to be honest. But if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this mod out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. If you want to support me on Patreon, that link will be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.